But I live by what the Word of God says. And when I heard that, I know what's going on. I know what's happening. I know what's happening. I ain't no prophet. I just read the book. And the writer of the book interpreted to my soul that, hey, son, I mean, things, things should just get ready. But then, you know, and that's all good. And we got a good shout about going to heaven. You looking forward to going to heaven? Ain't you looking forward to leaving all your sorrows behind, all your, all your tears and your burdens and your troubles and your trials and your valleys and tribulations and all that stuff? Leaving it all behind and going to be in heaven with a man named Jesus who bled and died. Happy day, happy day. But I'll just be honest with you, that rejoicing don't last too long because reality sets back in. The adversary shows back up. He's already, some of y'all, you, you ain't got a smile. I don't know what happened to your smile. You lost it days gone by. Life is all gloom and doom. But listen, as a child of God, you should be the happiest person on planet earth. In the middle of tribulation, in the middle of troubles and valleys and hardships and all of that, you should still be able to muster up a smile on your face. To know why? Because you have something down on the inside of you that identifies with somebody out of this world. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And I know it don't change the fact of what you deal with in everyday life. That's why I kind of try to let the Lord lead me, and I'm glad He does, to preach around what's happening in our lives. Because that's what's real. What's happening around you in your life and the circumstances of the hour in which we're living, the things that's transpired, I mean, that's real stuff. Because we're real people with real feelings, with real troubles, with the real God. And sometimes we get uh, 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 fixed on being real people with real feelings, with real troubles and problems, but we forget about the real God. Take your Bibles this morning, if you would, and I want you to go to Second Peter, First Peter, excuse me, First Peter, chapter number five. And you stand to your feet in all the scriptures this morning. I want to preach to you. We've been preaching around this subject, you know, for quite a few weeks now, hitting on it, and uh, you know, and and about having the Spirit of God down on the inside of you. You have a weapon this morning, and, and it sounds like I may preach some stuff I've already been preaching, but that's all right because what I've been preaching, everybody, ain't, it ain't taking root. Because if it was taking root, there'd be a whole lot more smiles in the sanctuary. There'd be a whole lot more rejoicing in the sanctuary. There'd be a whole lot more worshiping and praising in the sanctuary. But listen to me. I'm not throwing you under the bus. Understand that. I'm not throwing you under the bus. I'm preaching to you where you're at. I'm talking about where we are at. Not you. We. What we're dealing with. And what we're dealing with is a real adversary. You have a real enemy. You have somebody that's coming at you, for you, to destroy you. He don't like you having joy. He don't like you having peace. He don't like you having a shout, having a praise, being blood bought, blood washed, sealed by the Spirit of God on your way to heaven. He don't like the fact that you know there ain't no more condemnation. You're standing in the grace of God. You're living by the grace of God. You're walking in the grace of God. He don't like that. But listen, listen, it don't change the fact you still got victory. You still got victory. Look in the Bible. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse number 6, the Bible says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of who? God. Not under no other man's name. You humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. You don't bow to man. Let me say that again. You don't bow to man. You bow to God and Him alone. There is only one supreme authority. And his name is Jehovah Jireh. He's the lily of the valley. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the great I am. Amen. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the one that bled and died for you. He is the supreme authority in your life. And let me let you in on a secret. He will never, ever hand over his authority. The Bible says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Notice that word mighty. That what? That he may exalt you in what? In due time. 
I mean, there's going to come a time. In God's time, He's going to exalt you. We try to exalt ourselves. We try to make a name for ourselves. We try to make a life for ourselves. But all God wants out of you is humble yourself. And then he says, I'll exalt you. Look at that verse number 7. The Bible says, casting what? Say that next word with me. Casting what? All. All. I say it all the time. No matter what, no matter what denomination you come from, no matter what skin color you are, no matter what nationality you are, no matter how many languages you know or speak, all means all in whatever language. All your cares, where? Let me ask you a question. This ain't my but Let me ask you this. Why are you carrying what you carry? Why are you battling what you're battling? Why are, why are you dealing with what you're dealing with? And I preach it to myself. Why do we carry what we carry? When he simply says, cast it all. You mean I can cast my failures? Don't they fall in the category of all? You mean I can cast I get my faults? That falls in all. You mean my slip-ups? My all. You mean my lost children? That's your all. You mean my finances? That falls in all. My health? That falls in all. You mean the anxiety? That falls in all. Stress? Depression? Discouragement? Do I need to go on? All of those things fall in the same category as all. Why? He says, because I care for you. I care for you. Think on that for a minute. He said, because I care for you. I want what you're going through. I don't want you going through what you're going through. So I tell you what, give it to me. Give it to me. You hear what he's saying? That's the Lord talking to you. Cast it all on me. Not because you're a Baptist. Not because you're a man or a woman. Not because you're an American. He said, because I care for you. And if you don't humble yourself and you don't cast for yourself because I care for you. Listen, there's something bigger coming. Verse number 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil... I'm not your enemy. Your husband's not your enemy. Your wife's not your enemy. The Democrat ain't your enemy. The Republican ain't your enemy. Donald Trump ain't your enemy. Obama's not your enemy. Joe Biden ain't your enemy. The man down the street ain't your enemy. They're not your enemy. Your adversary who? The devil. As a, look at this, roaring lion. Walketh about seeking. Check this out now. I'm going so listen for whom he may devour. May devour, which means there's a possibility he won't devour. You hear me? There's a possibility. Oh, the devil's coming out. I know he's coming at you. The Bible tells us that. Oh, he's got a loud roar. Let me pray and you can be seated. Lord, we love you. Have your way this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. At Roaring Lion, everybody knows. Everybody watched Lion King. And everybody knows who the king of the jungle is. It's the lion. Oh, hey, the lion ain't got to get up. The lion ain't got to move. The lion ain't all the lion's got to do is lift his big ugly head up with that mane around his neck and give one great big loud roar. And everybody in the jungle knows there's a lion in the house. And if you don't watch out, that lion's going to get you. And the lion knows all I got to do is give a roar. I ain't got to get up. I don't have to chase. I ain't got to go after him. All I got to do is roar. And you know what they'll do? They'll back up. 
They'll run off. They'll sit down. And look what your Bible says. The Bible says, The devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. If truth be known this morning on the authority of the Word of God, listen to me and listen to me good this morning, child of God. The roaring lion, the adversary, cannot ever cross over the bloodline of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is impossible for the devil to destroy your soul. You hear what I'm saying? It's impossible for the devil to destroy your spirit because it's been blood bought and sealed by the Spirit of God and the roar can't do nothing but scare you. Now, he can mangle up your flesh. He can tear up your flesh. He can tear up your mind. He can tear everything up fleshly about you. But the good news is this, child of God, your flesh may be destroyed, but that man down on the inside. It's been blood bought, sealed by the Spirit of God. Listen. Listen to me. I'm tired of watching God's people get caught up in all the gloom and the doom of what's happening in our society. I'm going to vote. You better vote. Don't you sign one melon in or lick a stamp. You walk up into that place and you push the button in person. Say amen, amen, amen. But listen to me. My hope ain't in the November 4th election. My hope ain't what's sitting in the White House. But my hope is sitting at the right hand of the Father whose name is Jesus Christ and Him alone. Listen, you got victory this morning, but too many folks is living by the roar. Hey, that'd be a good title right there. Living by the roar. He roars, we go silent. Listen, listen, I know how to deer hunt. You ain't going to kill nothing. The enemy, the deer, if you want to call them that. He will spot me if I move too much. Come on. If I make too much noise with my candy wrappers, he'll hear it. And you know what? And as soon as he hears me, as soon as he sees me, listen, most of the time, he ain't got to see me. He just hears something, and then he throws his old nose up in the air. Now, the devil can't operate that because most people don't smell like a Christian. I'll leave that one alone. But my point is this. Just like me against that deer, it's the same way with the lion. Man, he is the king of the jungle. And all the others around him, they'll go silent. They'll get still. They'll slowly slip out because if they make too much noise, if they, if they do too much, if they get out of their comfort zone, guess what's going to happen? The line's going to get them. That's where most Christians are today. They ain't making no noise. They ain't making no noise at all. They ain't making no noise. I said Christian ain't making no noise. They go, hey, they, hey, if the church house is gone silent, I know we ain't making no noise out there in the devil's kingdom. You hear what I'm saying? If the worship is gone and the praise is gone, I know that when we're slipping out there and making our way through the wild jungle of this world and we hear the voice of the roaring lion, I know what we're doing. We're backing up. We're finding our little comfort zone. We're putting on our camouflage, if you please, and making sure that the king of the jungle don't know who we are right. I don't care how camouflaged you are I don't care how silent you are it's time you rise up yeah. take your mask off if you please y'all understand what I'm saying yeah. and let the world know that hey I ain't afraid of no lion well preacher I don't know about you but I've watched Lion King I've been to the zoo I've seen their teeth well, you know what? I've watched Lion King. I've been to the zoo. I've been to Africa. I've been right there within 10, 15 feet of the king of the jungle. And man, what a mighty, mighty roar he had. But you know what I found out? Somebody taught me something very, very important. That as long as I stayed in the truck, 
long as I stayed in the Jeep, long as I stayed in the automobile that I was supposed to be in, everything would be all right. And the king of the jungle wouldn't bother me. And you know what happened? We were sitting there one day. It wasn't the king of the jungle. It was a leopard. A leopard was up on that war hog. Hey, man, that old ant hill. And there was a war hog down inside that thing. And that leopard was laying up on top waiting to get a, a pounce on that thing. I'm sitting there. Oh, man, it was a beautiful sight. And there's a limb in the way. And the limb hey, was getting in the way of the picture that Taylor was trying to take. So you know what Tim did? The preacher did. Daddy did. Tim reached out there, grabbed that limb. And I moved that limb. And about the time I reached outside and I broke the barrier of the automobile we was in. Immediately when I broke the barrier, that leopard turned his head and he looked at it. And the hair on the back of his neck started to stand up. But our little driver, thank God for Moses. Say amen. Our little driver, Moses, he looked back here and said, oh, no, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't you do that. Keep everything inside the Jeep. Why does it matter? He can see me. He knows we're here. He said, yeah, but long as you're inside, everything will be all right. But as soon as you break through, he knows I can get a hold of that right there. I said all of that to say this. The day that you got saved, the day that you got born again, there was something that you was put inside to. It was called the body of Christ. There was something put inside of you. It was called the Spirit of God. As long as you stay in the ship, as long as you stay in the automobile, as long as you stay with the Spirit of God, there ain't no roar. There ain't no lie. There ain't no devil or demon of hell that can take the child of God. You got victory this morning. Listen, listen, listen. Take your Bibles. I want to preach to you this morning on the victory of Samson. Living in the victory of Samson. Take your Bibles and go to the book of Judges if you would. Judges chapter number 14. Judges chapter number 14. I'm going to get, read this scripture. I'll give you the message real quickly. Chapter number 14, verse number 5 says this. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath. And came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, look at this. A young lion roared against him. I wonder if that's why Peter penned what he penned back over there in the New Testament. Because listen, this devil has been after God's people since the day God booted him out of heaven. You got to understand something. I know how you feel. You feel like you're the only one going through it. You feel like you're the only mama that's experiencing it. You feel like you're the only daddy or husband that's going through it. You feel like you're the only grandma or grandpa or aunt or uncle. You feel like you're in this world all along and nobody understands how I'm feeling. Nobody knows what I'm going through. We're the only married couple that's struggling. I'm the only single one that's struggling. I'm the only teenager that's struggling. But truth of the matter is, ever since the fall in the garden, mankind has been struggling and ever since God booted Satan out of heaven he has been nothing but a roaring lion coming after God's people now for the sake of time you go home and study who Samson is he's a Nazarite by birth set apart separated sanctified for the call of God but look where he's at he's coming up into the vineyard in a place called Timnath with his mom and the daddy, where you ought to feel safe, be safe. He's a young man now. He's a young man. He's already got hormones going. He's already thinking about women and chasing women. And that's going to be the downfall of Samson. Yeah. We all know the story of Samson. That's why you better be careful, man. You better be careful, man. You're a man. And if you ain't careful, Delilah will get you. And then it's going to be, woe is me, I never thought I would. Well, under God, read your Bible, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. If you look long enough, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. You'll be done picked up your tent, moved down there to Sodom. If you don't believe that, go read over there in Genesis about Lot. He pitched his tent towards Sodom, set his affection in his eyesight on Sodom. Next thing you know, he's down there in Sodom. Look over there at David. I don't know, I, must be some man in here cheating on his wife. I don't know why I'm on his name in my nose. But look at David over there. He's supposed to be out on the battlefield. But instead of being out on the battlefield, he was at home on the internet. Say amen. He was home on the internet searching. And guess what happened? Boop, there it is. She popped up. There was little old, there was little old Bathsheba. The Bathsheba out there. So you know what David did? He folded up his laptop. 
top. He slid it to the side out there on his balcony where he was all alone. Nobody knew what he was doing. He slipped over there to the edge of his balcony. Behold, a lady by the name of Bathsheba. Bathsheba's just doing what she's supposed to be doing. Y'all understand? Well, you know what? If Bathsheba hadn't have been there, maybe David wouldn't have fallen. No, bless God, maybe David would have been the man he's supposed to be. Be where God had him at. Bathsheba was doing what she ought to be doing. That was taking the bath. Say amen. I ain't chasing that rabbit no more. Somebody, whoever you are, you better get right. It's going to catch up. It's going to come out. It don't come whining and crying to the preacher because your marriage fell apart. Stupid, you're the one that caused it. Say amen. Why you say they stupid, preacher? Because there's a difference between ignorance and stupid. Ignorance of something is something you don't know. You understand what I'm saying? Stupid is when you know it and you still go opposite. And then complain about the outcome. So I just told you, stupid, stay off the internet. Get your eyes back on your wife. Get that thing right and love the woman God gave you. Say amen. amen. Lady, whoever you are, when you find out, God bless your soul, I pray for you. Amen. Beat the devil out of them. Amen. You know what some of you ladies need to do? When you catch them on that phone... I'd, I'd beat the devil out of it with a hammer. You catch him on the internet, I put my fist through it. And then you know what you ought to do? You ought to turn around and smack him right across his, his two little beady little eyes. Make him swell up. Preacher, you believe in physical violence? No, I don't. I'm preaching in the flesh right now. I'd punch him right in the middle of the square of his eyes where his eyes swell up where he couldn't see the screen. And I'd fix it where his thumbs could not text. So, man, when you come in next week with a black eye, we're going to know it was you. <laughs> Listen, honey, and if you have to go to court, call me as your witness. I'll tell them you was acting on the authority of the pastor. <laughs> the Bible says a young lion was roaring. Look at verse number six. And the, say that word with me. Yeah. Of the Lord came mightily upon him. Listen to me, ladies. Listen to me, men. All of you just battling things. I got, I got a three-point outline. It ain't going to take me long. we done. I don't know if I even get to the outline. What you're facing, some of you, whoever you are, woman, I, it's in here. Somebody's in here. Yeah. And you think you can't make it, but you can. Listen to me, woman. That sucker's got you manipulated up here to make you think you can't survive on your own. Oh, yes, you can. You don't need the deadbeat. Right. Are you an advocate for divorce? I never said that. Right. If I tell you what I am an advocate for, on, to be against any deadbeat, low life, no good for nothing, so-called husband who's going to go out and step out on her yeah. and want to blame whatever. There ain't no excuse. Right. Say amen. 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 Do this. Yeah. Yeah. You better smile. Everybody better be saying, especially all you men, better be saying amen. Listen. Wife, you can make it. Husband, you can make it. Mama, you can raise them children. You can. Daddy, you can raise them children. Oh, what's people going to think? Of? How's people going to, listen, you can walk right up in the middle of the house of God with your head held up. With all the hell going around you, still lift your voice towards heaven, worship Jesus Christ and Him alone, and you know what? And He will accept your worship. You hear what I'm saying? I'm saying you're able. You're able. Listen, now let me get off all that adultery stuff. Amen. God will deal with you. I hope He gives you something you can't never, or the Ajax won't take off. Say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Some of y'all catch that later on. Listen, but the rest of you in here, you're going through things and you feel like you cannot make it. You feel like you can't. There is no doubt you're waking up in some mornings and with the pain you're feeling and when Arnold comes in there, you know the responsibility. You know how he feels. I can only 
Imagine what goes through your mind of wanting to give up and throw in the towel. I can only imagine the times that went through his mind that he wanted to give up, throw in the towel. Feels like he's no good. I know it because he comes to me and says, Preacher, I know I can't be here all the time, but I want you to know I love you and I'm praying for you. So no doubt what's going on in y'all's lives may be totally different than the rest of the congregation, but you get to a point where you feel like you cannot make it. No doubt what you battle, you feel like you cannot make it. No doubt the venture that you're beginning to go down, the trail you've never been. You've never been a preacher. You've never been a preacher's wife. No doubt the things that's going through your mind. And you're going to get to places that you're going to feel like you cannot make it and you can't go on. No doubt everybody in here this morning, you have felt like you cannot make it. You cannot do it. But I'm telling you this morning, you can make it. You have something that this world does not have. The Bible says in 1 Peter over there, he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh the mouth, seeking whom he may devour. A roaring lion, the Bible calls him. And then the Bible says that Samson, hey, he walks down in there to the vineyard, and a young lion with a great roar comes out. And there, I didn't read the whole verse, but Samson ain't got a cane in his hand. Samson ain't got a weapon in his hand. Samson is standing there, nothing but pray. That's all he is. Bring up that verse for me, that last verse in Judges. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. You see that? When you got saved, listen to me. I ain't got time to get all into it. If you want to sit around a round table when COVID is over and, and hash it out, we can. But what's happening right here is a little bit different than the Spirit of God and how he deals and dwells in the New Testament. You hear me? You hear me? But it don't change the fact. He's still the Spirit of God. You hear me? The Spirit of God could come upon people, and he could leave people before the cross of Calvary. If you don't believe that, go study your Bible. He came upon Saul, and you know what he did? And he left Saul. Here it is. The Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily. What's that next word right there? Upon him. You know what that means? That it right here, there's a time the Spirit of God went upon him. I didn't say Samson was saved. I didn't say Samson was lost. I said how the Spirit of God dwelt with mankind in the Old Testament before the cross of Calvary. He came upon on people and he left people but the day that the veil was rent from top to bottom and you got born again through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ Paul says that you know what happened that the spirit of God baptized you into the family of God and sealed himself in until the day of redemption that means that when the spirit of God moved in he ain't a moving out until Jesus Christ steps out and you know what and when the spirit of, listen to me when the spirit of God God leaves this boy right here. Guess who's going with them? I'm going with them, my friend. The Spirit of God will never depart from us. Look right here. Came mightily upon him. And he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. I could preach a whole message on that part right there. Amen. The Spirit of God don't boast of itself. The Spirit of God don't brag about himself. The Spirit of God will only lift up the name of Jesus. If you find somebody, they're always talking about what they've done. They're always talking about what they're accomplishing. They're always talking about how good they are, how great they are. You might as well go on and mark it down. It ain't about the Spirit of God. Say amen. There's a difference between using personal hey personal examples and personal experiences in a message but I'm talking about somebody every time you're around them all they're talking about is themselves but listen to me that's another message come back we'll preach it later on in the month but the Bible says right there that the spirit of God came mighty upon him and he rid him as he would have rid a kid that's not the young lion written Samson my friend but that is Samson with his bare hands listen to me he had no weapon no doubt he stood around around and look and he heard the roar of the lion no doubt he could see the dark eyes of the lion no doubt the lion showed his teeth and he looks around I ain't got a weapon I don't have a spear I don't have a rod I ain't got nothing my friend he didn't even have the jawbone of an ass if you please but you know what he had he had the spirit of God and the spirit of God moved upon him and the only thing he could do is say you know what right I just gotta trust the spirit of God and the Bible says this ain't what the 
the preacher said. This ain't what the Baptist said. This is what the Bible says. He says he rid him as he had rid a kid. And he had nothing in his head. He tore that light up. Why? Because he had the Spirit of God upon him. Now there's one difference between you and Samson. You have the Spirit of God within you. Who never leaves you nor forsakes you. That's why in the middle of all that's going on, you can still. I say in the middle of everything you're facing, yeah, you can still. Offer up a wave offering to the Lord. This ain't for the preacher to see. This ain't for the preacher to think, oh, I'm doing good. But no, my friend, you lift your hands up towards heaven and you give him a wave offering. Let him know, hey, I'm just grateful to be a child of the king. I'm glad I'm joined heirs with Christ. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, my friend, you can lift up your voice and say, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you for the blood. Yes, you can do all of that. Why? Because because you've got the Spirit of God down on the inside of you. But you want to know what? you got the roar of a burden. you got the roar of a headache. Oh, God bless Taylor and her headache. Most people get headaches, they don't come. I don't know if I'm going to get to my outline. What I'm trying to say is in this avenue of which we're walking, in the hour that is on the clock of mankind, being that this race is coming around the fourth bend and the checkered flag is just in sight. And to be that the devil said, Katie, bar the door. I'm fixing to lose everything I got. On the children of God. Because I know the devil knows once you're saved, you're always saved. You can't give the blood back. You can't wash the blood away. You can't send the blood away. Once the blood's applied, the blood is there. Say amen. I'm glad that salvation ain't based on how you feel. Because if, if it's based off how you feel, I'm feeling pretty hot right now. That must mean I'd be going to hell. But I ain't going. And children of God is walking around like they're nobodies. I didn't say walking around with your nose stuck up in the air like some of y'all do. God help, I hope you don't get caught in a rainstorm. But I'm talking about walking around, holding your integrity, your character, your posture right, knowing I ain't becoming somebody, I am somebody. I'm a child of the king. I belong to the creator. And all of y'all want to try to explain him away, you can try to explain him away all you want to. I talk to him. And something, something that don't exist, there ain't no way he could talk back. Well, either I'm a loose cannon, and some people have accused me of that, but I hear his voice. And his voice is like none other. I know his voice. I know it. And what I'm trying to tell you this morning is you can have the same victory that Samson has. Let me give you the three things real quickly. Number one, because of the Spirit of God that's down on the inside of you, you can have victory over the foe that would destroy you. You hear me? The foe that would destroy you. I'm trying to stay with us. Look at the book of Luke, chapter number 10, verse number 19. I'll move quickly. I know what time it is. Luke 10, verse number 19. The Bible says, Behold, look at this. Don't even turn in your Bibles. It's written in red. If you got the King James Bible, you can believe it. Amen. If you, if you got King James, you can just hold it and know it's right. The Bible says, Behold, I give unto who? You. Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, let me stop right here before somebody goes and does something stupid. Doctrinally, rightly dividing the scriptures, 
you better not go out here and go playing with snakes. If they bite you, if a venomous snake bites you, you're going to die. You don't have enough faith. You hear me? You don't have it. The Bible says, and scorpions, don't you mess with them. That thing will get you. It'll get you. He says, and over all the power of the enemy. Now notice something. Notice something. A serpent can only attack the flesh. The scorpion can only attack the flesh. So we can make a spiritual application right here and say this. Your soul is protected by the Spirit of God. So all the elements of this world, listen, COVID-19 is real. And guess what? There's other ones out there. There's probably going to be a COVID-2020, COVID-21, COVID-9747. There's some little short Asian dude that they're paying a lot of money to somewhere in this world, standing in a white coat and goggles and an asthmat suit, standing there putting something together that they're going to let out that's called chemical warfare, and it's going to come, and guess what it's going to do? When you get it, it's going to kill you. And guess what's going to happen? Your flesh is going back to the dust from which it's coming from. So you know what? You might as well go on and get ready. Take your Alka-Seltzers. Hey, pack up your bags. Hey, pack up your mask. Get your hand sanitizer that stinks to high heaven. Amen. Put your rubber gloves on. But guess what? When it comes your time to die, you're going to die. Your flesh is going back to the dust which it's coming from. I didn't say be stupid. I'm not going to run up to no little Asian with a hazmat suit and say, give me what you got. I'm going to tuck tail and run from the dude in the hazmat suit. I go ahead and promise you. Because I like this in which I'm living in. Say amen. But you know what the Bible says? And over all the power of the enemy. Did I already tell you who your enemy is? Did I already tell you who your enemy is? Did I already tell you who your adversary is? Which is telling me this. That listen, that weapon, the Spirit of God that's on the inside of you, you can rent him to pieces. You will be tell you how to rent him. You feel so unworthy right now. You know what you ought to do? You ought to say Hallelujah! I'm a child of the King! You know what you did? You just walked all over the devil. Don't let your trouble, don't let your problem don't let your failures don't let your faults or past mistakes take your worship because you got the spirit of god on the inside of you listen you can have victory over your foes number two i'm not going to read all this you write this scripture down colossians chapter number three verse five through ten romans 8 13 bring up colossians 3 5 for me there nate you just don't have victory over the foe that would destroy you. You also have victory over the flesh that would defile us. Listen to me. Listen to me good. No child of God should use their flesh as an excuse to sin. Amen. I said every blood-bought child of God should not use their flesh to be the excuse of their sin. Because you have the authority and the power inside of you to have victory over the flesh that would defile you. Look at this first verse right here. It's the only one. You read the rest of it I gave you. It's going to be Colossians 3, 5 through 10, Romans 8, 13. But it says, mortify. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth then it goes on and lists all the things all you men got upset with me a while ago what's the first thing he mentions fornication fornication i'll let god deal with you on that if you're saved if you ain't saved he'll deal with you about your salvation but that first word right there mortify mortify which means to discipline it get it under control He's telling, listen, this is this, Paul is speaking, and he is telling the child of God, you have the power to mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. The earth is physical. He is talking about your physical flesh, which is saying you have the ability, you have the authority to mortify this flesh. I have the authority over this flesh right here. If I blow my top, it's because I allow my flesh to blow my top. If I go out here and do something I'm not supposed to do, it's because I allowed it, my friend. Because the Bible tells me I have the authority, I have the capability, I have the power within me to mortify 
fortified these members which are upon this earth right here. It's called the Spirit of God. If the Spirit of God dwells down inside of you, your Bible tells you that the Spirit of God will lead thee and guide thee unto all truth. The Bible teaches us that the Spirit of God will convict you. He'll tell you before you commit the sin, you better not touch it. Amen. You better not do it. Oh, my Lord, the flesh got the best of me. That's a good old Baptist excuse to say this. I didn't listen to the Lord. He told me before I said it. He told me before I did, I better not do it. I didn't listen to him. I went on and did it my way anyway. You know what happens? Listen to me. Every time, every time, every time you allow your flesh to discipline your spirit, you end up in trouble. But if you allow the spirit to mortify your flesh, you'll live a victorious life. You have the authority. Now, every one of us, I make it sound easy, but every one of us battle that every day. You hear me? I blow, you ask my wife, I say, if you blow, you, you ever wonder why I say when you blow your top, use the first thing that comes out my mouth? You ever wonder why? Because I usually blow my top. It don't take much to make me blow my top. It don't take much for the great big capital B-L-U-E to come out and come out in a blaze. And usually what happens is whenever I lose control of my top, this follows right behind it. And then, and you know, and, 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 and the worst thing about all that is as I'm beginning to blow and he's a-talking and I'm not listening, then I blow and he's still a-talking and I let this go and he's still talking and I know that he's, remember I said a while ago, you can be, you can be singing, you can be doing all kinds and still be talking to the Lord as I'm a-blowing and letting him have it and expressing it and giving him a piece of my mind, you know, all that kind of stuff. He's a-talking to me and the more he's talking to me, the matter I'm getting because I know I should have listened back there. I done opened up my alligator mouth, you know, and you know, got my rear end in trouble and you know, and there ain't no going backwards, y'all understand what I'm saying? And all I'm saying is hey, the flesh gets the best of us. But listen, because the flesh gets the best of us, and because we flunked yesterday, or because we messed up this morning, don't mean that we can just say, you know what? Well, the flesh is like this anyway, so I might as well go ahead and do it. I ain't never going to get victory either. No, my friend, the moment you mortify your flesh, get it under the blood, your slate is clean before God Almighty. you got a fresh start, and you can continue to walk off and rent that line Hey, in the pieces like it's a kid. You got the victory. You can have victory just like Samson over the foe that defiles you or the flesh that defiles you. I don't forget what the foe was. Destroy us. The foe that destroys us, the flesh that would defile us. Lord, help me out on the piano. Last thing I'm going to mention, you'll find this in the book of Acts, chapter number 27. Bring that up for me, Nate. 21 through 25. Familiar story. You heard, you heard Evangelist Heath Williams preach on this a few weeks ago. I preached on it a month or so ago. Back, I think it was on a Wednesday night during the COVID stuff. But the greatest thing that grips people is robbing them and ruling them. And ruling the saved and the lost in the country in which we abide in is this thing called fear. Fear. Some of you sometimes, man, you want to lift your hand up, the fear grips you. There's times you want to say, hey, man, hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, whatever it is, fear grips you. The devil reminds you of all that's happened. Fear. Fear. Listen. Fear has gripped the hearts of Americans like never before. COVID, COVID, COVID is killing people like the flu. Right? Pneumonia, heart attack, cancer. Cancer is killing people by the dozens. Everybody put a mask on, but they ain't taking the cigarettes off the shelf. Oh, don't go out. Don't go out. 
don't go out. But I'll let you go drink liquor at 11 o'clock. Because liquor ain't killing people. We got a messed up society. And we listen to what they say. Now listen, I'm an advocate for common sense. Don't come shake my hand and be hugging all over me and all that and slopping, slobbering all over. I don't want your slob on me. I'm going to catch COVID. I ain't got time to be sick. Do you? But I ain't scared of COVID. I mean, if I'm going to be scared of COVID, I better be scared of the drunk driving down the street. I better not get my car. I better not get on an airplane. I better not. You just fill in the blank. You understand what I'm trying to say? How fear gives us. And it misses, causes us to miss out on so many things in life. Listen to me. If you've never raised your hand in church, you're missing a blessing. If you ain't never really truly worshipped and had your eyeballs fill up with water, tears begin to roll down your cheeks, and you don't know why you're crying, because you're not upset, you're not mad, you're just crying because you're happy. Because you think about who Jesus is. Oh man, you're missing it. You're missing it. You're missing it. Oh, what a joy. And sometimes, listen, sometimes the reason people don't worship is because of fear. Fear. You have an altar. Listen, let, let me let you in on a secret. Because you go to an altar to pray, don't mean you're guilty of sin. You, you know that, don't you? I mean, go back and read in Genesis about Abraham. That man built an altar everywhere he went. There's all kind of altars. There's altars of sacrifice. There's altars of thanksgiving. There's altars of repentance. Just because you go to an altar, man, you ever, you ever just walked out to an altar and knelt down before God and say, Lord, I just want to come tell you I love you. Lord, I didn't come to ask you for nothing. Lord, I just want to come tell you, thank you for being my Jesus. I can't, man, I can't explain it, but I sure am feeling it right now at my backside. But fear, Chris, what's people going to think if I shout? What's people going to think if I go to, are they going to think that that scene to preach? Man, I guarantee you every man in here right now won't go to an altar or, or think about not going to an altar because if I go to an altar, they're going to think I'm the one running around on my wife. Fear. Fear, the Bible says, but after a long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from the creek, from creek, and to have gained this harm and loss. He said, Y'all allowed y'all's flesh to go to the next verse. Y'all allowed y'all's flesh to get us in this mess. You wouldn't hearken to the man of God. And now I exhort you, what I'm trying to do, to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. But of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve. Say, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. What are you trying to say, preacher? Be of good cheer. Go, go, go on with that. Be of good cheer. Why? Because we believe God. That it shall be even as it was told me. That's why. Because I believe God. And you can believe God. That there ain't no foe that you can't overcome. There ain't no fleshly temptation that comes at you that God ain't made a way to escape. And you can get through it. And there ain't no fear that will grip your heart that takes away your belief in your God. I'm closing with this. It took less than 12 weeks for over 30% of 
of church attenders to quit attending church. Twelve weeks and over 30% of faith-going, faith-believing, children of God, they call themselves Christians, is not even attending church right now. All because of COVID. But they're on the lakes. They're in the malls. They're at the restaurants. They're taking their vacations. But I can't go up there to the house of God because I might catch COVID. Look, if you're going to be safe anywhere, <laughs> you'd probably be more safer at the house of God. You understand what I'm saying? It's fear. And I'm telling you this in closing. Be of good cheer. Because that roaring lion ain't a match to the Spirit of God. And that lion that's roaring in your life right now, where you can tag it whatever you want to tag it. But it's being loud and clear in your life and in your mind and in your heart right now. It's controlling you. It's controlling you. There's some things in some of y'all's lives that is controlling. There's people in your life, situations in your life, circumstances in your life that happened years ago that's controlling you right now. There's people listening online that won't attend the house of God because of how they got treated at the house of God so they'll never go back to the house of God. I'm not making light of that situation. I'm not making, I'm not condoning what happened. But what I am saying is I'm a doggone if I'm going to let some infidel, some rebellious religious person dictate where I go, how I live, how I worship, how I pray, how I walk with the Lord. I refuse. I refuse to make a Democrat. I refuse to let a Republican. I refuse a church member. I refuse my wife. I refuse anything that's going to dictate to me my authority with that man right there in the Spirit of God that lives on this side. Why? Because he's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Listen, listen, you can live in the victory of Samson by simply, go back to 1 Peter, Peter over there for me, that first verse, and Peter, I always get first and second mixed up, the first one, humble yourself, which one we at, 1 Peter 5, go to 6, go to 6, go to 6. Humble yourselves. That's all you got to do. That's not hard. Do it like this. Say this with me. Lord, I need you. You just humble yourself if you meant it. You just simply say it. I can't make it on my own. I ain't got nothing to offer. I am what I am. And Lord, I need you. Now I'm going to humble myself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. What? He may exalt me in due time. I'll listen to me. Now I promise you, it's the fourth, fifth time I've said it, and I'm done. You may not think it. You may not believe it. But the blood-bought child of God on the authority of that book right there, from Revelation 19 to the end of the book, the children of God, the bride of Christ, will have the last word. <laughs> That's why I like it. We will have the last word. We will make the last stand. We will be the ones standing there in the great white throne judgment when they cast every infidel, every religious person into the lake of fire. I'm not making light of that. It's His will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But everybody ain't going to heaven. But you know what? I'll be standing there to everybody that stubbed their nose up to Jesus, everybody that walked away from Jesus, everybody that trotted through the blood of Jesus will be standing there. And do you know what happens? After all of that happens, I got a great imagination. I can see the Lord getting up off his throne after he just cast him into hell bread. It says, come on now. I got some time now. Let's go, boy. And we go walking and strolling down the streets of gold. It says, look at there, boy. I made the walls of Jasper for you. Come here. Let me show you new residence. Come on, son. I'm going to take you and show you where you're going. Hey, look. Look back over there. That's what you used to be. You'll never be like that again. You're a child. 
God of the King. Look at my throne, boy. This is all for you. Look at this right here. You see that? That was for you. I'm trying to tell you, child of God, everything's going to be all right. Live in victory. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody's looking around. Some of you, you've been in tune with me. Some of you, you come in with a frown. And by the end of my preaching, just right there, the Lord let me preach. Your frown had turned into a smile. Some of you hadn't worshipped. By the end of this service, you didn't lifted your hand up. You know what? You was responding to the Spirit of God. But there's some of you in here, your countenance didn't change one bit. Something's wrong in your life. This invitation's for you. Without singling anybody out, without pointing fingers, or making somebody feel like they're the only one, my first call, my first plea is this. But don't nobody move until I ask you to. You're a blood bought child of God, you're joint heirs with Christ. You have victory in your soul and you know it because the Spirit of God abides there. In a few minutes, I want you to make your way to an altar of thanksgiving. In a minute, don't move now. Stay where you're at. You're here today, child of God. You know something ain't right in your life. Something ain't right in your heart. Before you can make an altar of thanksgiving, you got to have an altar of sacrifice. You got to give something back to the Lord, giving yourself back. That's you. I'm talking to you. Then there's some of you in here, you need to have an altar of repentance. An altar of repentance. Of coming and getting things square with the Lord. Turning from your wicked ways. Repent of that sin, never to return to it again. Walk in the ways of the Lord. This altar call is going to be for you. So the plea this morning is an altar of thanksgiving, an altar of sacrifice, an altar of repentance. This is what we're going to do is we're all standing to our feet. Nobody's making ready to leave. We're all standing to our feet. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. And friend, if you're here and you've never been saved, you never asked Jesus to your life, whenever you make your way down to an altar, I want you to get my attention. I'll be watching. And I'll make sure somebody with a Bible comes to you and shows you what does saith the Lord God, how you can leave this place today knowing you're a child of the King. And I'm going to pray. I wonder, will you respond to an altar of thanksgiving, an altar of sacrifice, an altar of repentance? We're all going to come at the same time. Nobody's going to know what you're coming for. It's between you and God. And you're just going to talk to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, have your way this morning. As they're coming, God, to their altar of thanksgiving, to their altar of sacrifice, to the altar of repentance, to claim the victory of Samson, that the Spirit of God may rest upon them and in them. Right now, have your way, sweet rose of Sharon. Mean he's coming. Will you do business with the Lord? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I thank you, Lord, for loving us. I thank you, Lord, for the Word of God and the examples that's been given. God, I thank you, Lord, for how you showed up that day down there in the vineyard of Timnath when a young man found himself in a predicament. What he felt like he had no weapon, he felt like he had no way out, nowhere to turn. Defeat was before him. Destruction was around him. And death was coming towards him. And out of nowhere, the mighty Spirit of God, Lord, you rested upon him. And he became a mighty man of God where he rent that young, roaring lion as it was a kid. Lord, these around this altar just praying to you. Make them strong. Fill their hearts. Enrich the Spirit of God within them, Lord. Remind them of who they are, what they are, where they're going. 
Remind them that no harm will come to any of them, Lord, in the sense that every child of God will make it safely home. Though the ship be destroyed, though this fleshly earth may be destroyed, this fleshly body may be destroyed, we'll make it all home safely to the shore. Have your way in their hearts and their lives, God. You pray as long as you like. I trust this morning, if you got anything, you get this. You have victory. Now, whether you exercise on that victory and put that victory into practice, it lies upon you. But you have it this morning. Amen, amen. Well, it's been a good day this morning. I appreciate the liberty you allowed me to preach, the liberty I have to preach here. And uh, remember, a couple of announcements will be gone. Uh, the safety team will be at the doors to receive our Sunday morning offering, side door handicap, back doors, thanks for everybody else. Uh, the Mets, our senior saints, they do have a candy, uh, a fundraiser going on this month uh, after the service uh, this morning and tonight. They're selling candy, and uh, so they'll be back there at the table. And, uh, if you got a few dollars to spare to help our senior saints and some of the activities they have to uh, offset the cost uh, of what they do, then we appreciate that, and uh, they're going to be getting back to that real soon. And uh, again, uh, remember the volunteers uh, that's going next week to Vacation Bible School down in Buford. That the Lord will use them there. And also this coming Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday night, 9, 10, 11, 12, the 12th, we will be returning back to Kids Connection uh, on Wednesday night. So bring your kids out, and they'll be going back. We opened back up a Children's Church last Sunday, and uh, this is the second Sunday back. This coming Wednesday, they'll be back uh, back then. And then on the 19th, our teens will be returning back to their uh, regular Wednesday night service that they have. And also remember this, the first Sunday in September, the first Sunday in September is our kickoff date back to Sunday school. And uh, so I hope you'll be here. Uh, but that particular morning, we will all be assembling in here at the 10 o'clock hour for Promotion Sunday. We have some children that's, uh, that's uh, got a year older, and they're going from one class to another class. So we're going to have Promotion Sunday that Sunday, acknowledge them, give them a certificate, something like that, just make, a, make much of them for a few minutes that morning, and then we'll be dis, uh, dismissing and going to our new Sunday school classes that they're moving up to, and adults will be going to theirs. So the first Sunday in September, please, parents, make sure your kids are here in place at the 10 o'clock hour in the sanctuary, and then uh, we'll go from there. First Sunday in September, back to Sunday school. We're trying to get back to, uh, to, uh, to normal as much as possible. Uh, those of you that don't know, that uh, on Wednesday, I believe it was Wednesday, uh, Governor Cooper uh, uh, kept state of North Carolina in the phase two for another five weeks, which puts us into the middle of September. And uh, so we're, uh, we're having to uh, uh, just make a little bit of adaption here and there. Uh, but nevertheless, we still have a constitutional biblical right to worship the Lord. Say amen. 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 We do ask you that whenever you exit, do abide by the law of the state of North Carolina, which is mandate uh, to wear a face mask. I know they're aggravating. Uh, let's be good stewards of what God's given us. That is a testimony God's given us to betray before others that they may see Christ in us. Amen. And, uh, and then do practice your social distance to our visitors, uh, guests is with us. We say thank you for being with us today, and uh, we're glad you're here. And uh, come back tonight at 5 o'clock. Come back tonight at 5 o'clock. And uh, Mr. Mr. Trevor, Preacher Trevor, who announced his call last Sunday. Let's give it a I mean, I'm still ticking about it. Let's give it to the Lord. I have it. We ain't clapping for Trevor. We're clapping for the Lord. Still calling men to preach. He's going to be preaching tonight, his first message ever. And uh, so uh, I trust you'd come back and, uh, and, and, and back him, support him, and encourage him. Listen, every preacher's had their first message. Peter had his first, Paul had his first, Daniel had his first, Billy Graham had his first, Preacher Tim had, everybody's had their first, and I promise you, the, the, my first one, still right here, I remember, I preached, uh, looking to the hills from which cometh our help, I went about three and a half minutes standing right here in this pulpit, <laughs> thought I was going to preach for an hour, I went about three and a half minutes, but listen, it'll mean a lot to this young man. Once he exits the pulpit, I promise you it'll mean a lot to him. Amen. So come back tonight and support him. Let's pray and you'll be at liberty. Lord, I love you. Thank you for being with us today. Go with us to the next appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You're at liberty.